Hey guys, this is John. I want to show you a puzzle that illustrates a couple of important king and pawn ending themes. I don't know exactly where I first saw this puzzle. I want to say from a Mark Duretsky book or a Johann Helston book. But at any rate, we are looking at this position from white's point of view. White's pawn is advancing down here towards f8. Black is advancing towards g1. This is white to move and win. If you want to give this a crack yourself, white to move and win, feel free to pause your video. Okay, so I've given this to a number of students in the past, and invariably, they struggle. It looks like a very simple position at first, because, you know, it's king and pawn versus king. There's only a limited number of continuations to examine. However, we can see that the direct tries fail for white. Okay, so many of you probably tried king e5 or king f4, probably the two most logical candidate moves, looking to very quickly advance towards the g6 pawn and take it, and then advance your f pawn and win. However, on king e5, black can play king c4, and if white just dogmatically tries to advance towards the g-pawn, black plays king d3, or king d5, king d4, those moves also work, king takes g6, and now not king e2, which is going to allow the f-pawn to run by, but instead king e4. So stepping into the path of the f-pawn, being able to take it if the f-pawn advances to f3 or f4, and if white tries to bring their king back to assist f4, Black just in time plays king f3 and physically blocks the f-pawn from advancing. Black will take the pawn and draw the game. So king e5 does not work, and also a last-minute attempt by white to play f4 and maybe have the f-pawn catch up with the white king is also not going to work. Black can play king e4, attack the pawn. If white tries to play king g5, we can always hang around this pawn and be able to take it as soon as white takes on g6. So that will not succeed for white. Likewise, king f4, very similar. Black plays king c4, king g5, and again, any of these moves will work for black. Let's say king d4, it's the same exact position. One more direct try, pawn f4 from the beginning for white. Now black can play king c4. Notice that black has taken the opposition here. Again, opposition, I like to think of it like we're fighting for control of these three squares. And if white plays king e5, black is going to outflank and get towards the white pawn again. So we have to expand the number of candidate moves we're looking at here for white. You start looking at uh, less intuitive ones, or if you've studied the opposition, maybe more intuitive even, king d5. What if we advance towards the black king, try to deny the black king these squares, and also still retain the option of going towards the pawn? Well, here too, a black can play king b4, and once more, if we go towards the pawn, it's just the same story. Black is gonna be able to get here in time. Trying to maintain the opposition, play king d4, not going to work. Black plays king b3 and can still threaten the same thing. And if king d3, here black can play king b2 or king b4, either one works. Uh, if white tries to do this, black might just change their mind and play their king back towards the pawn. White's kind of hampered by the fact that they can never play king f5 in these situations. So king d5 also misses the mark. So the only mo winning move for white is king d4. Highly counterintuitive, king d4. So advancing away from the black g-pawn and seemingly also not creating any problems for black because black can play king c6 or king b4 here. Black might even consider advancing the pawn. However, with king d4, white is going to force either a favorable opposition scenario or a favorable shouldering scenario. Okay, so let's look at these circumstances. So let's say black plays king b4 intending if white goes king e5 to play king c4, familiar story. Well, here, white can play f4. Exercising their right to move the pawn two squares, because again, white hasn't moved their pawn from the starting square, and gaining extremely useful time in the process. So f4, and if black continues trying to flank down, now it's the same deal as before, but when we get to this position, white has already played f4 and therefore can play f5, the pawn's protected, and we'll just march to victory here. Game over. So king d4, king b4, f4 forces a favorable opposition situation where black can't make a useful move towards the white pawn and also black can't play g5. If king c6, trying to come back this way, now white plays king e5, now white will cut towards the black g pawn. But in doing so, we shoulder the black king we prevent the black king from reaching these two desirable squares. And again, if black plays king c5, 
hoping for king f6, king d5, or king d4, trying to get into the e4 square. We don't have to oblige black. We can play f4 again. We can burn some uh, useful reserve tempi. So there's even another theme at play here, reserve tempi, and force this favorable opposition scenario again, where black has to make the first move, and king c6 and king c4 are not helpful for black. And if black plays king d7 instead of king c5, we play king f6. Black may play king e8, let's say. King takes g6, king f8. But hopefully, we can quickly identify that this is a totally winning position for white. Not only has white's king reached the key square, but also white has reserve tempi with the f-pawn available. So if king g8, let's say, f4, king f8, f5, king g8, we can get into e7, and the pawn will promote. If you can't easily identify why this situation is winning for white, I highly recommend you go and watch my videos on opposition. So king d4, the magic move. And really the only other relevant try that we haven't examined is for black to avoid playing king c6 or king b4 and instead move their g-pawn. But now white can play king e5, advance, advance towards the g-pawn. And if king c4, king f5, king d3 takes king e4, because we captured the pawn on g5 rather than g6, here we can play f4 and the pawn is protected. And again, white's f-pawn will advance to victory. So a number of important themes here, foremost being opposition and shouldering. We also see the value of reserve tempi, being able to play a useful pawn push, as in the case of this position here, king d4, king b4, and f4, or also king d4, king c6, king e5, king c5, and f4. All great things to think about in king and pawn endings, and sometimes even beyond king and pawn endings. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.